Hi guys, it's Alicia here with my work basket. Today I'm going to show you how to use a potholder loom with yarn to make woven squares. A potholder loom is one of those things that a lot of people end up acquiring one and sometimes they don't even know why or they had it for their kids. Um, they you tend to find them I mean even at like yard sales and stuff and a lot of people only know how to use them with the loops and don't even realize that you can use them with yarns and other things and you can actually make some really cool stuff out of them so you could take squares and make blankets coats hats I mean just any anything you can do with a square squares are so versatile so I did this one before I started recording just to kind of refresh my skills and I haven't done a square in a while, but I was kind of toying. I had some ideas in my head and I needed to kind of see how it came out to make sure I could do it right. And I was like, I'll, I'll record a different one for you. So it's really easy to do. You're going to need a potholder loom. Um, I actually was just using the weird metal weaving tool that came with it, but you can use something like a crochet hook. And then I have this yarn. I bought this yarn with the intention of doing some projects with it. And, um, I'm sorry to say it, sorry to Lion Brand, but this yarn, the Rewind Tape yarn, I hate it. I hate it so much. Um, I just can't, there's so much stuff that I wanted to make with it that I just cannot picture making with it. And like they show a sweater on the label, but let me show you why I don't think you would want to make a sweater with this yarn. So if I take the yarn end, it's it's like unfelted felt is how it feels i mean like it doesn't take hardly any pressure to really pull it apart um it's just too weak to me like there's no weave to it it's not i thought it was going to be i ordered it online and i thought it was going to be like a woven ribbon yarn and the whole tape yarn thing i just can't picture what you would really use with it but i have like 12 skeins of this so i thought i'd try it on the old potholder loom and maybe make something, I don't know, maybe like a table runner or a place mat or something. So let's get started and I will show you how I do it on the potholder loom. I'm sure there's lots of other ways. I'm sure other people do other things, but let's get going. Okay, so let's get started. Um, my potholder loom is a little dusty in there. <sighs> So one thing worth noting is that I am working opposite of the camera. I'm on one side of the table and then the loom and then the camera. But it doesn't really matter what direction you go. So don't feel like you have to go the exact same direction that I'm going or you have to work right to left or anything like that. It really doesn't matter. So I'm going to leave a tail because you always do. And I'm going to kind of loosely do a slip knot. And then I'm just going to do the classic weaving thing of going back and forth. And it doesn't matter if you go up and down, side to side, as long as on the next part you work the opposite. If you're curious why I still have this yarn if I hated it so much, um, I did buy this yarn online during COVID. It came, I pretty much immediately was like, I have no idea, this isn't going to work for half of the stuff I wanted it for. What am I going to do with this? But unfortunately, it was, I would have either had to pay to return it, like pay return shipping and that kind of stuff, or I would have had to go in store to return it. And I actually live in a pretty populated, decently sized metropolitan area, and I was really avoiding stores. And so the idea of essentially risking COVID over yarn or paying to return yarn I was like you know what I'm crafty enough surely I can come up with something to do with this yarn and so I just ended up like throwing it in the stash pile and going with it um no it doesn't entirely matter my tail is quite long and I have it coming out the end of my thing if you don't and it's up here that's okay too so what I do and it does kind of create a weird loop when you go to work around I circle around one corner. You can also cut off and start over. It kind of depends on how detailed you want to be for your project. So then you're going to decide if you're going over one, under two, you know, kind of what, what weaving pattern you want to do. And I think I'm going to go every two. So 
So I'm just going over and under and it'll become clearer how this looks after I get a few rows down here. I'm bringing it around that corner. I'm hooking it and bringing it back through. Making sure I don't snag it and I'm just hooking it over here. And then I'm doing that again. So for every row that you do, you're doing kind of both. You only have to work across one direction. So as always in weaving, you're doing the opposite of last time. So all the rows that were under last time, I'm over this time. And I also, I mean, squares are so versatile that I'm like, maybe, I mean, you could do anything with squares. I just saw someone, and I, I wish I had saved it. Someone that I follow on Instagram, their daughter made a vest out of squares on one of these looms. And she had actually only just used, like, the loops. But it was pretty cute. But the squares are always so versatile. I love different things that can make squares and circles and pretty much any basic shape you can then turn around and do so much with it so over under over under you can see how it's starting to come together here you can go under one over two there's so many different patterns you can do here I'm just doing a basic under two over two under two over two here loop it around bring it down i'm also allowing this yarn to get a little bit twisted i could focus on making sure it was super flat but one thing i do like about this yarn is that it has a slight i don't want to say sheen to it it has like a kind of a thing that it does around the edges and so by letting it get a little twisty it shows that off a little bit more but I could focus on making sure it was super, like, really flat and ribbony. Which brings up the point to, you can also do this with ribbon. It doesn't have to be yarn. You could do this with fabric, strips. Anything somewhat yarny. So this is where you can see I'm going over two threads, under two threads, over two, under two, over two, under two. And this is where you can mix it up and do some different varieties. I'm just making sure I don't catch any threads on my way across. Hook it on the opposite side and bring it down. So you can see how this is going. All right, and I'm gonna speed it up and finish this square. Okay, so I wanted to add a little tip here. Um, this is kind of a cut in, this is a second square that I'm working on. But before you get too far, if you're following along, I wanna add this tip about how tight your weave should be. Essentially, as you're going this direction, you want it a little bit springy. You want it somewhat loose, but you never want your loose, you want you never want your loops like out here, like too loose. You want it to be able to kind of stand and hold its own loop. So if these loops are too loose, it's going to fall off and that's going to be a problem. So you want it loose. You don't want to be like yanking it as tight as you can yank it every time. But you do want it sturdy. And you can see even like if I pull this, see how thin that yarn gets. You want it to be able to stay on the loops by itself without being floppy. And you don't want it to be super duper duper tight. So you you kind of got to get used to it and see how tight for it to be. But you don't want to work as tight as possible. But you don't want it super super loose. It should be springy but not floppy. Okay, so my square is finished being woven. 
Um, little tip is that you're always going to want to be careful on that last row, whatever, whatever side is your last row weaving, you're going to want to be careful that you don't accidentally pop your loops off. Um, also I did allow the yarn, each individual strand to twist if it wanted to, but I did make sure that they followed a pattern where, you know, they were lined up correctly going back and forth. So I didn't let them twist around each other just keep it smooth and some yarns that will matter and some it won't and you can definitely see where it balled up a bit more is a bit closer to, like a more open and where it's tended to stay flatter is a bit more full so i'm at the end i've got my piece i'm gonna cut some with a tail i'm gonna pull my crochet hook out and this is one of those, I can't guarantee this is the right way to do this. This is how I do this. I send it through that last loop, pick up my tail, and I kind of create a little knot with that. And that way that end is already a little bit secure. You're going to pop this off. And you're going to crochet each of your loops there, just like you would if you were actually doing it as a potholder loom. So you're going to go under one and crochet your loop over, pop one off. So you're just crocheting the loop through the next loop, through the next loop, through the next loop. Some yarns that can be tricky to do without using your fingers. So I'm sorry if you can't necessarily see what I'm doing. And you don't have to use this yarn. I showed you what yarn I'm using in case you're curious, in case you like it, but you do not have to use this yarn. You can use any yarn. You can use plarn that you've made from plastic bags. You can use fabric strips, anything that you would usually use like a yarn, you can do this with. Crocheting the ends off this way is what helps hold it together. If you just pop it off, it's going to kind of get floppy, kind of fall apart. This is helping secure your stuff. So I end up with kind of a big triangle. I go through and make a loop. And then I just kind of go through again like a chain because there's so much of it there. That works for me. You can play around with what works for you. Keep working around the next side. Crochet round and round and around. This is back where my tail from the first piece is there. So this is a loose tail I can weave in or trim later. And I'm just working my way around. As they start to pop off, that's okay. You just want to be careful not to get them mixed up. You want to be sure that you go in the right order. So it's okay if they come off. At this, at this point, it's somewhat held together. But you still don't want to pop it off any earlier than you have to. This yarn is also a little bit tricky to work with. It's a little bit slick. I did make some cute keychains with it that are just tassels, and I had those available on my website for a while. They did make pretty neat tassels. I will give the yarn credit for that. This yarn made a really cute tassel. It also would probably make a really cute pom-pom. I was just, I was really disappointed in the weakness of it because it's not going to be able to do any of the projects I hoped for. I actually had the plans of making jewelry with this yarn and that most definitely is not going to happen. So this last row usually pops off. And again, you just want to be careful that you're doing the loops in the right order, not getting all mixed up. 
and also that you're just being delicate and careful so that your piece your piece is not firm and secured yet so you want to be careful that you're not doing anything that might make it fall apart so i'm just going in order you can see here how this loop is very easy to get dropped so i just want to make sure i'm working carefully and delicately to make sure nothing falls apart see so like this could very easily get pulled out of order and we don't want that out of order is no good back to where i started so this is the loop that i started where i tied off my end and this is the last loop on the side and what i do is go through and then i'll usually kind of do another almost like a single crochet there do what feels right to you to secure it and there you go so this yarn actually works out pretty well as a cute little square i think it came out really good and then you end up with this nice kind of crocheted edge that you can use to sew squares together so i think that came out pretty good i'll probably pull out some more of the colors of this yarn and see what i come up with it may not be a bad blanket honestly it says you can machine wash this yarn and lay flat to dry so yeah um also one thing to note on this yarn is it's listed as a bulky it doesn't work up like a bulky as you can see it actually balls up like pretty thin if you want to use crochet i'm sorry if you want to weave on your pot holder loom you can use any yarn just keep in mind that the thickness of your yarn is going to control the thickness of your weave so if you use a really thin yarn it's going to be a very lacy open weave unless you use it doubled or tripled or something like that so this blue one that i had done is a thinner yarn it's more like maybe a fingering yarn and i did hold it double the whole time but as you can see it's still much airier than a heavier yarn would have been and a thick yarn you you know you're going to use a single a really thin yarn you can use triple but you can see how those two side by side the blue is much lighter and more thin than the slightly thicker green is so that is how you weave on a potholder loom with yarn or other yarn like items i hope you enjoyed this video i'd always love to hear if you make something or if this helps you you can drop me a comment if you'd like to send me pictures of your finished project i try to put my email on the camera on the video across here um me doing that is a sign to myself in editing of like hey you you said you'd put something here so i'll try to put my email at the bottom of this i hope this helps you out i'd love to see what you make i'd love to hear your comments or questions anytime you have a question if i can help i absolutely will so i hope you enjoyed watching more importantly i hope you had a great day i hope you have a great day and Feel free to like and subscribe, and if not, that's okay, but I hope this helped you out. Thanks for watching! Okay, okay, so my woven squares grew into a whole project, and so I'm going to show you real quick how for this particular project, I'm hooking my squares together. Um, there are countless ways to hook squares together, whether it be a green square, a knit square, a woven square. You can sew them, you can crochet them. I mean, there are just, there are tons and tons and tons of ways to do it. So the way that I'm about to show you is by no means the only way. It's not even the only way I know. It's just the one I opted to do on this particular project. It creates these ridges that for this project is what I wanted. And what I've been doing is going around. So I'll do this edge and then keep going this edge. And then I actually go ahead and do the third one kind of all at the same time usually. So I'm just going to show you on one edge how I've been doing this. I'm using the yellower yarn crocheting loop and I am crocheting it so I'm just doing a slip knot. I have the camera so it's kind of looking over my shoulder which I hope makes it clear enough for you. I'm not um, on these squares they're all even they're all equal there's no wrong or right side so I'm just picking up here in the corner and on this particular one, I'm only doing the equivalent of the top loop, which I'll explain in a minute. So I'm going through my green, I'm going through my yellow, and then 
I am just slip stitching through all of that, including my starter loop. Okay, so that's my first stitch down. So by going through just the top loop, I'm going through just the loop, and then it's kind of the opposite on the yellow side. But I'm just going through the loop that will be on top of both squares. Go through the green, go through the yellow, yarn over loop through both, and do a slip stitch by going through all of it. And I'm just working my way up that way. In the corner, I'm taking an extra stitch where I kind of collect all the loops that are gathered up in that corner. And again, this is just one way of many. You could just as easily sew your squares together. The final result will be different, but there, it's, it's not wrong. It's just different. So if you're losing track of which loop is which, it may be easiest to lay it out and then only go through the loop that is on top. So you can go through both loops. I'm just not. And that just makes it where my back is a little bit more flexible and loose. Hopefully I don't regret it because this is actually going to be a floor cushion. So let me try and do one more, a little bit, one or two more, a little bit closer to the camera here for you. So I'm going through one loop in the green, one loop in the yellow, pulling through both of those and the loop of my hook. So I'm just doing a slip stitch. Um, and like I said, you can go through both loops. I'm just not for this project this time. Go through one, go through one, pull through all, and that's creating this ridge. I will try to do more tutorials specific to just squares, but hopefully that's enough to help you just for this video this time. Okay, so I was about to edit the weaving video together, get that posted for you and I decided to go ahead and do a quick update of the project and how it's come along so far. I just discovered it is not as close to done as I thought. So this is a floor pillow. It's really just a older feather pillow that we don't use for anything else and so I keep them in a pile in the classroom and craft room for reading. So I originally was going from memory and thought it would be nine squares. Then I had to add more rows and now I see that it really needs another row on both sides of squares. So the project is not as close to done as I thought. I thought I just finished putting the last square on. I haven't woven my ends yet, as you can see. I'm going to take those ends and just tighten up any loose corners as I weave them in and knot those up. And then I haven't decided yet if I'm going to do a woven back so the back and the front are the same or if I'm going to sew a back. But I'm going to use my woven squares as a cover for this floor reading pillow. Um, the fact that I need more squares to make even the front shows I'm probably going to have a fabric for the back because my brain switches around a lot. Like I'm a little bit sick of making squares already. And if I've got to do what, five, six, seven, eight, nine more squares, I think I'm going to be sick of squares before I get to the point that I'm making the back. So chances are my back is going to be fabric, but there's my project so far. My husband fell in love with these squares. He was like, these would make an amazing blanket. It actually made me feel kind of guilty because I haven't made him anything for a long time, but I'm making my son a blanket and I only just finished a son for my um, blanket for my son like a year ago. Um, but I told him, I was like, I can't, I can't take on another blanket. So I'm sticking with the original plan of making this a floor pillow. And then now I technically owe my husband a blanket. But so that's how that's coming along. That's what my woven squares are going to be. And chances are I will show off the finished pillow in some future update, just kind of some weekend catch up. So thanks for watching. I hope you found these this helpful. I'd love to see what you make and feel free to ask any questions or anything in the comments.